uh, the, the land of the free is the mass incarceration capital of the world. We warehouse 25% of the world's prisoners. And <clears throat> people on both sides of the aisle know that our current criminal justice system uh, needs reform. And we saw that this summer, a multiracial coalition of conscience pouring out into American streets after the tragic deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and so many others. And what did Kelly Leffler do? She used her enormous privilege and power uh, as a United States senator uh, to pick a fight with the black women on her team who know what it's like to grow up in a community where you have to have two talks with your children, one with, about the birds and the bees, the birds and the bees and the other, about what happens if you're pulled over by police officers. To acknowledge that is not to condemn police officers in general. Uh, I've worked with police across the years. I've been invited to speak at their memorial services when they have lost love, when they've lost their lives in the line of duty. And she says she uh, is against racism and that racism has no place, but she welcomed the support of a QAnon conspiracy theorist and she sat down with a white supremacist for an interview. I don't think she can explain that. May I, let, may I let me give you a chance to respond to that, and then we'll have one last question before we get to closing statements, please. Well, that's incredibly sad, these comments that he's made. I mean, first of all, there's not a racist bone in my body. I have worked to bring communities together my entire life. But this is really terrible, coming from someone uh, who has div divided people continually. He's called on Americans to repent for their worship of whiteness He's called Israel an apartheid state and said that we should end military assistance. He's comp compared Israelis defending themselves against Palestinians. He's compared them to birds of prey. And he's celebrated Jeremiah Wright, an anti-American, anti-Semite. That's divisive. Greg Bluestein, one last question. Senator, should members of Congress be barred from trading stocks? Look, what's at stake here in this election is the American dream. That's what's under attack. When they attack me for a lie, a left-wing media lie conspired with the Democrats by, this is an attack on every single Georgian who gets up every day to work hard to provide a better life for their family who wants to live the American dream. It's a distraction from the real issues, not the conspiracies in this election. What's at stake is the future of our country, our freedoms to live the American dream, to not be taxed into bankruptcy, to not have to go on to government uh, health care, government-run health care. They want to take away the health care that 180 million Americans rely on through their work. That's why I've introduced a health care plan to make it more affordable, not government-run health care that would bankrupt those that rely on Medicare. And I'm going to continue to fight to keep our country free, to keep our borders <clears throat> secure, and make sure that our communities are safe and secure. Well, that I've been running into all across this state, particularly in rural Georgia. Reverend, thank you. I'd like to respond. Well, we're out of time. I apologize, but you're going to have a chance for a closing statement here in a moment. That is all the time we have for questions. The candidates now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Senator Leffel, you get to go first. Well, thank you to everyone who tuned in to this important debate. You can see what's at stake. There are two visions for our country. Mine, the American dream. My opponent, socialism. This is what's on the ballot January 5th, the American dream. I was born and raised on a farm. I grew up working in the fields. I built my career. I became a job creator right here in Georgia. And I have been blessed to live the American dream. But Chuck Schumer said it best. Now we take Georgia, then we change America. They would increase our taxes, open our borders, socialize our health care. And my opponent, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, is his agent of change, someone that has falsely used the Bible to attack our military. The Bible never said that we serve, uh, that you can't serve God and in the military. He's attacked our police officers. He wants to fundamentally change America into a socialist country. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm working hard for every single Georgian. I'm Kelly Leffler. I'm asking for your vote on January 5th. Thank you, and may God bless America. Thank you, Senator. Reverend Warnock, your closing statement. Thank you so much, and thanks to everybody who tuned in tonight. I'm Raphael Warnock. 
Uh, I'm one of 12 children in my family, and I'm number 11, the first college graduate. Listen, uh, these are dark and difficult times. And amidst the thick fog of this pandemic and the economic turndown, even during this season of joy, it's hard for people to find joy. I think about my dad in a moment like this. God bless his memory. He used to wake me up every morning at dawn and said, get ready, get dressed, put your shoes on. It was dawn. And so it was morning, but it was still dark. It's dark right now, but morning is on the way. It's our job, Georgia, to put our shoes on and get ready because there are those who are engaged in the politics of division. They have no vision, and so they engage in division. Uh, tomorrow is the last day to register. Tell everybody you know to make a vote plan because health care is on the ballot. Workers are on the ballot. Voting rights is on the ballot. Criminal justice reform is on the ballot. And if you give me the honor of representing you in the U.S. Senate, we have to I'll go, be sir. thinking about Georgia every single day. Thank you Thank very you so much, much, Reverend and Senator. Before we conclude this debate, everyone involved in tonight's production sends their condolences to the Leffler campaign and to the family of staff member Harrison Deal, who was killed in a car accident on Friday. Our thoughts are with the family. They're with you. We're very, very sorry. We'd like to remind voters that Election Day is Tuesday, January 5th. Absentee voting has already begun in Georgia, and early voting in Georgia begins December 14th. Thanks to the candidates and to the panel for participating in this debate. Well done. Thanks to the Atlanta Press Club and Georgia Public Broadcasting for arranging this debate. I'm Russ Spencer with Fox 5 in Atlanta. Thank you for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. Good night.